Hello, welcome back, and happy Arvo. Thank you for coming back, guys. I've got an interesting video today. Uh, a modern family home inspired by the uh, Australian lifestyle, house tour. The local project is who this is by. Um, hmm. I don't know anything about the local project. I just thought it was interesting potentially to see a tour of a house inspired by the Australian lifestyle. I I don't know. I haven't watched it yet, so I really... I Let's just watch. I have nothing to say. I haven't watched it yet. I don't know why I'm trying to think of something to say. Let's just watch. Evelyn is located in Paddington, which is an inner city suburb of Brisbane. Fairly famous for character houses. And what is a character house? It was one of those projects that you knew straight away had so much potential. The windows there are bizarre. It's one of those projects. I'm trying to understand what I'm looking at on the back of that house. It's different. I don't, I, I've never seen something like that. This brown part. Except you knew straight away had so much potential. Are those like shades that open and close? Huh. When we first met Ian and Laura, they came to us with a vision for this house. For them, it was about their family. For them, it was about how they wanted to live. Myself and my business partner having children the same age. What is that little coffee table made out of? That thing, at first I thought it looked like it was made out of like foam. <laughs> then I thought maybe concrete. They wanted to live. Myself and my business partner having. It's, it's odd, huh? This is a very, very modern looking home. I'm guessing most, clearly most Australian homes don't look like this, huh? Children the same age. We understood straight away what they were trying to achieve out of this house. It was a little cottage. We like oh, to wow. think that 1911 cottage that was there was always Evelyn. She was just wrapped up, boarded off. And we just had to come in and throw the drapes aside, peel the edges back, get her up out of the ground and give her a new life. Interesting roof. And the front door almost doesn't exist. It's more of a gate than it is anything else. That's what, what? And as you peel inside. The front door is just always open to the air like, huh? And, and so is the whole house. as you peel inside, you arrive underneath an olive tree on a lawn in an outdoor room. What? There's no celebration. Outdoor room? Isn't that like an oxymoron? Outdoor room. About a big grand entrance. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, this is not what I expected. Of tree on a lawn in an outdoor room. The grass is so short. Is that how it is? I know that's how it is in like, um, England, I think. Is that how it is in Australia? People keep their grass like that short, like a golf green or a fairway? There's no celebration about a big grand entrance or a big void. The big void is the yard. It's the lungs and the heart of the entire house. So we deliberately downplay every other aspect around it. it That's incredible how it opens up, like the whole wall opens up to the outside. Nestles in and it understands what it is to live in a Queenslander. To live in a Queenslander? Nine days out of 10, you can live with the entire house open. Huh. Every so oh, because it's the weather there is just that that beautiful circulation path. Every room, That's really every cool. moment, and every aspect of this house responds back to the lawn, the pool, and the garden that it's nestled within. And that very act of going up two steps through an archway is what separates the private domains, which is the kids' bedroom. Okay, this is very like. Just then, I realized when he's like the very act of stepping up through those two steps through the archway is like some kind of symbolic thing. I realize this is a very serious, <laughs> they're very serious about the design of this house. Steps through an archway is what separates the private domains, which is the- Look at that, those shades though. The kids' bedrooms, the bathrooms, and the master bedroom. Those rooms become less about the courtyard and more about this private sanctuary in the back. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you'd open the window and it's just like the rainforest is coming into the house. The plants are just coming in. 
You simply have to pull one door away. Uh, all right. And you can physically touch the trees, the plants, see the butterflies yeah, flying past. Yeah, and they past. can touch you. In a nutshell, that's what this, is this crazy. house tries to achieve. We live busy, hectic lives. We all work in intense jobs. You travel through the CBD and being so close to all that is hectic about inner city living. I need to figure out what the CBD is because here in America, that's just like some kind of marijuana thing. When you come through the front door and you shut it behind you, this house aspires to being one of retreat, of tranquility. Then we brought in some more obvious ways to explore that sense of green vista. In the bathrooms, for instance, where we've wrapped the entire bathrooms in that beautiful green terrazzo, so you really do feel like you're sinking down terrazzo. into the bath, immersing yourself in the garden. That would be really cool to have the window open like that, taking a bath like in the freaking forest. The original workers' cottage part of the house, which is directly behind me, was a testament to the era of building at the time. So in the interiors, we wanted to bring in Reminds that handcraft of, of nature, of joinery work and timber work. That one continuous detail used consistently throughout the house gives it rhythm. Throughout the house, the lighting has been very deliberately chosen, particularly the lack of any mm. lighting on the ceiling. The ceiling itself has a beautiful curved arch and we didn't want to destroy that. So we've fixed all our lighting to the side. Didn't want to destroy that. Wow, that's a very um, strong term. Very strong. I'd be kind of offended if I had an arch and she came in, she's like, uh, you destroyed that arch with that light that you put up there. We've made the most of both wall lighting and up and down lights. You destroyed it. Those wall lights of both wall lighting and up and down lights. At nighttime, those wall lights cast a beautiful soft glow, which is a really nice contrast to the dappled light that runs across the floor during the day. One of the most important aspects was a desire to live all on one level. That's an interesting mm. aspect in any inner city Brisbane brief when you have a one in eight slope. One of the first things we did was lift the cottage back up. From the outside, you'll see a series of new gables, each one of those matching. The I'm interested in the roof. And also I see a lot of solar panels there in Australia, which I suppose it is very sunny. So that makes sense. And I know Elon Musk put up some kind of battery thing there. Um, that was cool. That was a big story, but um. The roof is interesting. It's like, uh, you know, maybe it's just this super modern home. But we use shingles over here, okay? The existing gable roof of the cottage etched into that. Wait, each one of those matching the existing gable, gable roof. Existing gable roof of the cottage hmm. etched into that concrete arch are the old VJ boards, remnants of a bygone era. The ceilings mirror and mimic the cladding and the timber because we wanted all of the new to seamlessly transition into the old and vice versa. It's very much part of the storyline of that house. The arch is a really strong motif that we've used to delineate moving from one space to the next. As you come up the stairs, you are actually greeted by... I don't think I'm worthy of walking through this home, you know? Like, I feel like if they were next to me, these people talking, and I was walking through the house, they'd be probably offended by like how how much I wasn't picking up on that the archways are like delineating different sections. I'm just like, I would be really interested in how the plants are coming through the windows and how the, the wall just opens up. But these people put a lot of thought into every little thing. An arch in plan form, which is wrapped around the olive tree in the courtyard. And then as you step inside the house, we've used the arch again to break those zones throughout the house. Mm. Wanted to really continue that sense of serenity through limited material palette, but used and crafted with detail. This isn't a house of features. It's not a house of dominant color tones or materiality. It's very much a subtle. Yeah, you... I did notice it's very white. Very white and brown. Used palette. It brings that backyard into the center. Mm. It's paramount. Without that yard being at the middle, the house doesn't. That yard right there? Doesn't function. 
Wow. And our architecture responds to that, creating rooms that are both indoor and outdoor. <laughs> we have outdoor shutters room. without glass in them so that you open the shutters and they catch the breezes. Well, I mean, you've got freaking rooms that are literally outside, so I suppose, why not? Why not have shutters they move down with no the side windows the with no glass? We have windows that face predominantly south in the bedrooms and so and so. You've got to at least have some rooms that are completely sealed off from the elements. What are you going to do if it's like raining? Well, they're beautifully cool spaces, but also have big fins on the north in winter to This room must be shut off. That winter sunlight directly in. You see that green garden That's from so every aspect. Beautiful. So from the outdoor room, you spill out onto the grass. From the kitchen, you spill out onto the grass. From the lounge and the dining room, again, open those doors and the kids can be playing right outside. We are extremely fortunate as architects to be given the trust to design houses for people in spaces where families come together. So to spend time there, <laughs> I don't know why, but there was something funny to me about these. They've built up this yard so much and these kids, it's, I, I mean, it's cool that the kids are playing, but there's not much to do out there, huh? Maybe get them a, get them a swing set or something. How about like a, um, a zip line that goes from one of the outdoor rooms to the other? We are extremely fortunate. They're just like pushing each other over. We are extremely fortunate as architects to be given the trust oh, the kids are to design so houses fun. for people, spaces where families come together. Sit down, bro. So to spend time with Ian and Laura and have a much longer lasting friendship at the end of this project is rare, but it's the one thing that makes doing what we do so special. It's calm and it's reserved intelligent and functional but equally guys i'm not serious enough for this video like i honestly feel bad here i'm gonna thumb it up does that make up for it i feel bad because i'm just not serious enough about the architecture Ugh. it's very beautiful how many times do i need to say that it's calm i feel like reserved. i'm like not respecting it enough intelligent and functional but equally it says on a weekend let's throw the doors open there's a party at my house that's ian and laura ah yes Let's throw the door open. Every There's time I party at my house. smile. This house is so very much them. Wow. Whew. Okay. Well, that was something else. Honestly, I was. <laughs> I thought this was just going to be like a typical modern Australian home. Uh, but that was something much more, I, I think. I don't think you guys are all living out in the outdoor rooms. But that was really cool. Um, it just wasn't what I expected, so I'm probably going to do another video. Uh, try and find, like, a more... I don't, I don't really know what I was expecting. Like, some kind of... I just want to know, like, what a typical Australian house is like. I don't know. But that was that was certainly interesting. Uh, very, very, very beautiful. Good job, um, the local project. And <laughs> um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I did. I mean, I, it was a, it was a very interesting. Um, and hey, thanks for watching with me. Happy Arvo. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, and maybe we'll find like a normal Australian house to react to. <laughs> Goodbye.